What's up guys? Welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video, we'll run through some of the basic terminology associated with typography. So download the free infographic file from the description below and I'll pass you over to Rory now who will take you through these terms. Thanks Ross. So let's get started with our overview of basic type related terminology. We're going to start with the difference between a typeface and a font. Yes, there is a difference. Starting with the term typeface, the Cambridge Dictionary refers to this as letters and numbers in a particular design used in printing or on a computer screen. The thing to focus on this is the part about a particular design. A typeface is an overarching design or style of type. It's also referred referred to as a font family, which is an easier way of thinking about them. A typeface is the design of a set or family of fonts. So what is a font then? Well, it's a particular iteration of a typeface. Make sense? Okay, so let's look at an example. Helvetica is a typeface, a typeface I'm sure you've all heard of. Now Helvetica Bold is a font though. Helvetica is the name of the family of fonts and the specific weights or styles such as Italian italicized versions are the fonts making up the typeface. Another way to look at this is when you're in a program like Adobe Illustrator, when you go to select a font, you normally have two drop down menus, one for the typeface and one for the fonts within that typeface. Make sense now? Great. Moving on, let's take a look at some basic terms surrounding how type is designed, proportioned and aligned. Take this text for example. There are several invisible guidelines being adhered to. First of all, the baseline is the line at which all of the letters sit on. Now of course, lowercase letters like the Y and P in this case drop below the baseline. These sections of those letters are what's known as descenders, and normally they drop to a consistent descender line. Now the opposite of this is the ascender line, where lowercase letters like B, D, H and L all align to, and this tends to be slightly taller than the cap line, also known as the cap height, which as you may have guessed is the line at which the capital letters align to. Going back to lowercase letters, we also have what's known as a mean line, which is also referred to as the X height. This is the height that most lowercase letters align to, with the exception of the ascending letters. The last point on this is that you may notice that certain letters slightly overlap the baseline and meanline guides. This is what's called overhang, and without getting into the specifics, it helps these letters appear optically aligned with one another, even though technically speaking they aren't. Next up though, we're going to run through some of the basic formatting terms you'll hear when working with type. First on the list is leading. Simply put, this is the distance between the baselines of text, which is why it's also known as line spacing. This can play a huge role in how readable text is, especially when there's lots of it. Tracking is our next term, and this refers to the spacing of letters within entire words, sentences, or paragraphs, and is often confused with our next term, which is kerning. Unlike tracking, kerning refers to the spacing between individual letters. It's something that's often necessary for achieving better optical balance between certain letters, and can vary hugely from typeface to typeface. Lastly, we'll run through some of the most commonly used typeface classifications starting with serif typefaces. Now serifs are the small feet or extensions applied to the ends of each character. They give for a more traditional, formal and elegant look, but can also be easier to read at smaller sizes due to the letters being easier to distinguish. Sans serif typefaces on the other hand are designed without these feet. The word sans is actually French and translates as without. They tend to have a much more clinical, modern and friendly appearance and are used much more in digital output. Slab serif typefaces are similar to that of serif, however the serifs themselves are characterised by being more block-like and thick. They fall somewhere in between the readability of a serif typeface and the modern look of a sans serif typeface. Last but not least, script typefaces are based on a more fluid, handwritten look, so often have a more unique aesthetic to them than the other classifications we've covered. They can also range from detailed calligraphy style type to more informal and simplified hand-drawn lettering, so can work for a variety of looks. Okay, I hope you guys found these explanations useful, and remember, 
there are far more terms and theory surrounding this subject that if you're interested in learning, we cover in detail within our online course. So that's it for a roundup of basic type terminology. Hopefully now you understand these terms with more confidence. And of course, if you have any questions, then drop a comment down below and we'll do our best to help. And if you want to learn more about graphic design, we've created a free one hour training where you'll discover the top five secrets of successful designers, which saves you the hassle of having to figure it all out for yourself. We'll be showing you one, how to immerse yourself in the sector you're designing for, Two, creative thinking and how to spark creativity. Three, what good composition is and how you can achieve it in your designs. Four, how to pick the right colors for your designs. And five, how to pick the right typefaces for your projects. So if you're serious about leveling up your design skills, then make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. Space is limited and these events always fill up fast because they're significantly better than the information others charge you for and ours is free. The link is in the description. You're not gonna to want to miss it. I'll see you there.